Hello there, this video will cover how to install Python in a Linux desktop on an Android. Python is currently a high-paid area in programming that is also heavily used in AI. If you are interested in Linux on an Android, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on an Android without rooting. There will be commands, further information, and updates in the pinned comment for this video. To install Python, we can use Synaptic, which we can get to by going to the menu, and in the Preferences category, we can open up Synaptic Package Manager. When Synaptic is open, we'll need to be online because we are going to click on the Reload button to get an up-to-date list of the available software. When Synaptic is done reloading, we can then click on the Search button and search by name for IDLE3. IDLE is the Integrated Development Environment for Python. When IDLE 3 comes up, we can right-click on it, select Mark for Installation, and then click on the Mark button for the additional required changes. From there, to install IDLE 3, we just need to click on the Apply button, and then click on Apply again to confirm the install. When the install is finished, we can generally ignore and close out of any errors. Now we can repeat this process for the rest of the installs. So for our next download, we can do python3 pip. This is the command line package installer for Python. After that, we can also install python3 pip dep tree. This is a command line tool for showing installed Python packages in the form of a dependency tree. Next, there's python3 examples. This gives us examples, demos, and tools for Python. Last but not least, we have python3-doc. This is the official Python documentation. After we have finished those installs, we can then close out of Synaptic. Now we can start up Python by going to the menu, and in the programming section, we can open up the Python IDLE. This will open up to a Python shell where we can execute Python code. To configure the IDLE, we can go to the Options menu and select Configure IDLE. From here, under the Fonts slash Tabs tab, we can adjust the fonts to our liking. After adjusting the fonts, we can also go to the Highlights tab where we can choose the theme and individual colors. Lastly, in the General tab, under the Shell Preferences section, I recommend setting the Auto Squeeze Min Lines to 5000. And once we are done with all of our configurations, we can then click on the OK button to apply the changes we made and close out of the settings window. Here, I am executing one line of code in the Python shell as an example. So for this instance, when I enter in an equation and I press Enter, I get the result of the equation. Now to create a Python file that we can execute, we can go to the File menu and select New File. Here, I am just putting in a classic Hello World example. Now to save the file, we can go to the File menu and select Save. From there, we can name the file, and after we've named the file, we can click on the Save button. Note that if you run a program without saving it, that's okay because it will ask you to save the program before running it. It's also a good practice when you are done with a project to save a copy of it outside of Userland. Now we can execute the code from the file by going to the Run menu and selecting Run Module. Module is just a fancy way of saying that a file contains Python code. After we've selected Run Module, the code from the file will run in the Python shell. Note that the Python shell will also show what file is running. To see the examples that we installed earlier, we can go to the Help menu and select Turtle Demo. In the window that comes up from the Examples menu, we can select from the list of examples, and after we've selected an example, we can click on the Start button where we can see the magic happen. Now, I'm going to cover a good amount of help and documentation, so just note that I will have all links and help references listed in the pinned comment for quick reference. First up, we have the Interactive Help in the Python shell. To start up the interactive help, we just need to type in help with opening and closing parentheses. From there, we can type in the name of any module, keyword, or topic, and we will get more information about it. For example, if I type in print, I will get more information about the print function that I used earlier. Now to exit out of the interactive help, we just simply type in quit and press enter. 
For documentation about the IDLE itself, we can go to the Help menu and select IDLE Help. In the IDLE documentation, there is a TOC button in the top left corner. It stands for Table of Contents and it lets us navigate to specific parts of the documentation. Now to view the Python documentation that we downloaded earlier, we need to go to a browser and type in file colon slash 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 and press enter. This will take us to the root directory. From here, we can navigate to the Python documentation by either manually clicking through the folders, typing in the rest of the file path, or doing a combination of the two. I'm going to do a combination of the two. First, I'm going to add usr slash share slash dev help to the file path. Then I'm going to go into the books folder, and then I'm going to click on the version of Python I am using. And lastly, I'm going to add index.html to the end of the file path, press enter, and then we are taken to the official Python documentation. First thing I recommend doing here is bookmarking the page so we don't have to navigate to it again. Also, if you have more than one version of Python, then you can open up the Python IDLE and it will tell you what version of Python you are using. In the documentation, there's lots of help and there's lots of tutorials. To get to the tutorials, we just need to click on Tutorial and then slide down to the contents, click on using the Python interpreter, and then scroll down a little bit more and we will see the first code example. To go to the next or previous tutorials, we can scroll down to the bottom and then click on the previous or next buttons. These buttons are also located at the top right of the pages. Another good resource is the official Python website, which is python.org. Here they have downloads available cross-platform for Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and more. They also have news and updates on what's going on with Python, and they have tons of documentation. They even have job listings. Another link you may be interested in is tensorflow.org. This is a machine learning platform that is done with Python. There's also developers.google.com slash machine dash learning slash crash dash course. This teaches machine learning with Python and TensorFlow. One last link you may be interested in is a YouTube video called AlphaGo, which is about AI and it is a lot of fun to watch. One other place we can get more help or documentation for Python is from the terminal by doing Python 3 space dash dash help. We can also do man space Python 3 for a more detailed help. Additionally, we can do IDLE space dash dash help for more information about the Python IDLE. We can also do man space IDLE for more detailed documentation. Keep in mind that I've only gone over a few reference materials and that there's a ton more that covers Python in the form of websites, YouTubes, and books. Lastly, I have a couple of recommendations that can help with a Python workflow, one of which is pinning the Python IDLE to the taskbar. We can do that by right-clicking on the application launch bar, select application launch bar settings, and then from the list of installed applications, select the Python IDLE. From there, click on the add button. We can then close out of the application launch bar settings. Now we can open up the Python IDLE from the taskbar with a single click for quicker access. Lastly, it can be helpful to switch between desktops by doing Control, Alt, and then pressing on the right or left arrow keys. This can be helpful when referencing tutorials, documentation, notes, and so on. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, Linux on Android phones and tablets. And other than that, See you soon!